This is African Woman on the Move. On this episode, we speak with Ghanaian entrepreneur Lexi Owusu Bwahene. Hi, today I am outside of Cafe Accra. I'm going to speak with the owner today to find out about this cute little cafe. I love their pancakes, they have chicken waffles. This is a great spot for breakfast, brunch, or just to chill and hang out and have conversation. So we'll talk to the owner today. She is a phenomenal woman who also works in HR recruiting. So we'll talk to her a little bit about that as well. So let's go on inside. Lexi owusu is an African woman on the move. She's a modern woman doing some amazing things. I stepped inside the restaurant to grab her to have our conversation, but it was a little bit busy inside. So I decided to come outside to have our chat. Welcome. Today I'm talking to a wonderful woman here in Ghana who's doing some amazing things in business and making a difference in people's lives. Lexi is someone that I met here in Ghana and she's become a friend. Right. Um, she's got such great positive energy and I just I want to showcase women who are doing some amazing things in this country and on the continent of Africa and beyond. So right. thank you so much for taking out the time today. Thank you so much, Ivy, for having me. No I'm so problem. glad to be here. No problem. So please introduce yourself. So my name is Lexi Osubwahne. I'm an HR recruitment consultant and the founder of Cafe Accra. Um, I moved to Ghana five years ago in August. Five years already? Yeah. Wow. I don't know where the time has gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been five years. What made you move to Ghana? So a number of things. One, my mum has retired, so she relocated back. And she's getting old and she's doing a lot of things. So we all kind of wanted to, you know, see what she's up to and should anything happen. You know, we know what to do and where to go, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I also have a teenage daughter. At the time, she was... She's a teenager already? She's 16. What? At the time, she was 12. <laughs> So, and I didn't want to raise her in London, yeah. just that whole sensitive years, yeah. etc. cetera. Um, so I decided I'll come back with her. And now she's finished, she's gone back to continue her education. Oh, okay. And it's like, now I move for her and now I'm here. <laughs> Definitely have no intentions of going back. Um, no offense. Um, but yeah, so so yeah, so those are those were some of the, the those were a couple of the main like personal reasons. And of course, I could work anywhere. I'm an HR consultant, um, and of course, there's like a major gap in terms of employment and recruitment, and um, you know HR strategies and implementing like best practices from you know some of the experiences that I've learned and implementing them here. So so I identified a gap earlier on. So I thought you know why not. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the HR um, recruiting. Mm -hmm. So that's what you did in the UK, and then so now you're using that UK. skill set here in Ghana. Precisely. Yeah. Now here in this country, I know a lot of people have talked about uh, recruiting within Ghana. People have talked about people who are outside Ghana and want to come. Mm -hmm. Which one do you focus more on, or do you do both? So I think one of the beautiful things that we do is a mixture of two. And a lot of the reasons why our clients come to us is because they know they'll get people with international educational experience and international working experience, or either role, right? Um, so we tend to find like candidates that are abroad, that are looking for opportunities to come back. But then also we have um, candidates who may have come back on a con like come to Ghana on a contractual role and they're looking for a perm role or they're looking for like a shift in um, shift in industry um, or they're looking for like you know the next level up mm -hmm. but they happen to be someone that has you know relocated yeah and I guess naturally just because you know I'm also a returnee that you just get you know CVs and people that have returned that are like oh we're looking for this or we're looking for that yeah um, I get a lot of people asking me about um, what kind of work is available in Ghana sure. when they want to relocate here. What are some of the skills that are in high demand from your experience? I would say tech. Um, so everyone loves someone who's tech savvy, right? Because that's the way the world is going um, at the moment. Um, so people want someone that's going to come with innovate, you know, with various innovations. Um, that's going to come and you know implement new strategies in their business or new change methods and so on and so forth. So that's. That's one of the things I would say. Um, and of course, there's all sorts of professional um, professional industries that look for help. So from financial aspect to marketing to um, oil and gas, which is more specialized, so yeah. 
Would you recommend somebody looks for work while they're still abroad? Or would you recommend, you know, pack your bags, leave what you're doing and come here and search? Do you know what? Everyone's story that I've spoken to that has relocated is different. Um, my story is different. Your story is hella different. Yeah. So I feel like everyone's got their own, you know, situation that they're in. Um, some take, you know, bold steps. Some decide to, you know, wait it out. So I wouldn't advise necessarily that, you know, you pick up your bags and come. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be the one yeah. that's... <laughs> Because there's people to, who do that yeah, and, then, yeah, yeah. and then they're frustrated when yeah. they do that. And then some, it works out for them. Yes. So everyone's story is different. Yeah. Everyone's grace is different. You just never know. But the, I think for me, the, the key thing is to find that urge. When you get that urge that you want to move back and no one can stop you, yeah, that's then, the time. Yeah. And I feel like that's something we both and you know others might have experienced. Um, and when I said it to my family, they were not in shock because I, I remember like I'd always be here I'd, every summer, every Christmas. Like I couldn't wait for an opportunity to just get on the plane and get out of the cold <laughs> and, and be in Ghana and, you know, just be around family, good food, doing things, volunteering here, doing this, doing that. So that's good. I mean, yeah. and I know a lot of people from the UK that was quite common because coming from the UK, it's easier to get those flights and sometimes yes, get those discounts exactly, than coming exactly. from like the US yeah. or, Canada or Australia. But you guys you know, pay course, so much for yeah. flights. It's and outrageous. The flight is long. Twelve you know? hours. Yeah, so yours 15. is like what five hours? It's like five, six hours you know, in our here. People yeah. I know leave at midnight by the morning. They're, they're here. here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So I'm not surprised you were coming. So exactly. Often. Exactly. Um, so you have an event. Right. called Diaspora Drive, yes, which kind of falls in line with what you're doing with HR because you're sort of connecting Precisely. diaspora and you're having conversations about careers yep. and yep. business yep. and different yep. things. What made you decide to start that event? So when I relocated, I was like, I wish I had people that have moved that to tell me things and show me the way and like introduce me to certain people. But there was none of that, yeah. you know? There was no networking event to kind of encourage that. So I thought, why not do one? Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, like when I relocated, I would get people calling me like, oh, where do I send my kids to school? Or where can I get my passport from? Or where can I register a business? Or you know, like all these things, where can I get a job? Where can I do this? How do I make this? So I just thought, I'm gonna put everyone in a room, hear from people that have relocated, so an entrepreneur, hear from a CEO, hear from an employee, hear from, you know, like all these various young people that are doing phenomenal things, yeah. as well as people that have had to move because they've got like a political appointment. Um, and let them share their experiences, their challenges, their struggles, and share their stories. Mm -hmm. Um, but also while you're there, if you need to register a business, do it. If you need to open up a bank account, do it. If you need to, you know, meet this one, look at real estate and property and, and look at all these things, then we can do it in that one space and in yeah. that one time. So that's why I did my, that's why I, I did Sorry. the event. Do you find that the people who come to your event feel like they've gotten something out of it? Feel like it was like, yes, this is what I needed so that I can decide if I want to stay, if I want to go, if I want yeah. to collaborate. I feel like everyone comes with like different, um, different aims, right? So some come for the networking, some come to hear from people they admire or people in their industry. Um, or, you know, some just come because they've been following someone and yeah. they've been follow and they're inspired by their journey. So, so everyone comes for different reasons. But the feedback that we tend to get is, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I came because I was able to meet X, Y, and Z. And this ah, person's story resonated yes. with me. Uh, or this person inspired me, so now I can make a decision based on setting up a business here or in making an investment uh, choice here, or, and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everyone comes for different reasons. And for me, as long as you come and you leave feeling fulfilled, and not that it's just a talk shop. Yes. Um, and that you've actually exchanged numbers with someone. And, you know, I've, I, I've since, I mean, we're, this year will be our fourth one. Um, and since conception, I know people that set up businesses just from meeting there. Wow. I know someone who got married just from meeting at Dice really? Drive. I haven't found that place. <laughs> well, soon it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. So, you know, it's very, very impactful. And I feel like, you know, if you're sitting outside of Ghana at the moment, you're thinking about coming, it's definitely an event that, you know, you should definitely attend. Okay, so somebody who wants to get in touch with you, they want to ask questions about, you know, recruitment opportunities, 
what's the website, what's the social media for your company? For so, the I mean, you could just send us an email, info at LXHR Solutions. I'm sure you put it down below. Um, or check us out, lxhrsolutions.com. Um, but, you know, reach out to us. We'll share our contact details with you. You can follow us on Instagram, LXHR Solutions as well. Facebook, LXHR Solutions also. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Lexi owusu who represents what it means to be an African woman on the move. That's part one. Stay tuned for part two in that episode where she talks about her brand new restaurant, Cafe Accra.